So that's the context where matrix mechanics is made for. And instead of me lecturing for another 30 minutes, you have the note in front of you. Let me have you read it um, for however long you <laughs> need to read through it carefully. I'm going to write down a set of warm-up questions, warm-up calculations. When you feel you are ready, just go through it on your own with your group. And I'll, I don't know, let's try calling some people to write down answers when it looks like a lot of people are getting done. Good? Questions? Comments? No? All right. Good. I'll, you know, write down the questions and then start walking around. I'm going to call up these people, these, someone to work this out here. That's what this space is for. The next few questions, I'm just going to write it out because um, I might do it. I might just ask you for the answer without asking you to come up here. For those of you who are anxious to start calculating. All right. You still have time to read. I just want you to point out something for some people who might be moving earlier. Um, so, the, um, so for those people who are getting started early, there's some additional piece of information that I'm giving to you now that's not in the note. So in the note, I gave you this, the operator for measuring the G uh, component of angular mo spin angular momentum. Or if you're not there yet, you'll get there. <laughs> Um, these are the operators that measure the x component and y component of spin angular momentum. Okay. Um, you need to be given these operator forms, otherwise it's not something you can guess. Um, and uh, I guess if you look at this, it's something called uh, something called the Pauli matrices. If you want to look them up, look up Pauli matrices. That's what those are. Well, that's what those are based on. <laughs> um, this H bar over two is needed there. So, anyway, so I just want to um, explain that these are the questions. Whenever you're done reading, I'll start working on the questions. I'll walk walk around, answer any questions. Um, I'm hoping most people are done reading and uh, ready to start doing stuff by I don't know two ten, two twenty. Yeah, don't feel rushed. We have like another three hours of class time, <laughs> so yeah, plenty of time. Um, so do work in groups. You don't have any equipment that forces you to work in groups, but this is still meant to be a group activity. Like if you have questions, I mean, you can ask me, but it might be quicker to ask your group partners, what, like, what do you think this is? So do work in groups. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but do. I encourage you to work in groups. So th this is, um, maybe I should, let me try to address this. I'm getting these two questions, which are you know, good questions to have. One of the things that uh, made me struggle the first semester of uh, upper division quantum mechanics was I was seeing all these notations and I wasn't quite sure what they meant. So it's good that you are questioning the notation. So you are given this S, uh, you're asked to find the matrix form of S squared operator. So the very first thing you should ask is, well, what is it meant to do? It is meant to measure angular momentum magnitude squared. So if I expanded this notation just a little bit out, then it would be the, this vector operator, dot product, with another vector operator. Now, for this vector S, you have been given way to measure its individual components. You have been given way to measure its uh, X component. You've been given way to measure its Y component and you've been way, given way to measure the Z component. Now, what operation would you do? What algebraic operation would you do to try to uh, calculate its magnitude squared? Would you add the components together first? Like, you wouldn't do that, right? Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. You have to take the components squared plus this thing squared plus this. That's why I'm asking you for the squared quantity because I simply, if I simply ask you for S, it's a very easy mistake to make just to add the components together. You don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, so around the 220, I'll have, uh, take volunteers to do this, which is the easy calculation, and then we'll go through the rest of the questions. Um, I had a question about question six that I'm going to write a bit of a clarification. So when I say calculate, uh, I guess I really meant to say, um, and factor out psi if you can. So calculate for this, and oops, and factor out psi if you can. 
If you can't, oh well, then it's not an eigenstate. Oops, if you can't, if you can't. If you can't factor it out, all that means it's, in, it's not an eigenstate. But if it's an eigenstate, then you want to know what the eigenvalue is. Okay. How many people are done through question four? Let's say, done through here. Done through there. OK, um, can I take two volunteers to do questions one and two? Do I have volunteer from, I don't know, group in the center? Volunteer to do question one? OK, uh, function, do volunteer for question two? Yeah, OK, could you please come up, right? Um, I have pens here, and uh, we'll see if uh, they do it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want me to check first? That seems like a cheating, but sure. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, for me to check before. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Kian and Function. So yeah, that's it. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, so it, it's not a difficult calculation, but this is showing the basic idea behind what, what we are calculating and what it's for. So you have a state which you maybe suspect is an um, eigenstate or it's a state with a definite particular value uh, for the thing you are measuring. And if your guess turns out to be correct, then after you apply the operator, by which we mean do the matrix multiplication, you get an end result that you can factor into the original state, original state and a simple scalar coefficient. And when you have done that, this simple scalar coefficient, this represents your measurement. So the first result, Kian got plus h bar over 2. So that's a spin pointing in the positive z direction, or spin up. And um, here, function got, after going through the calculation, after factoring out the state, um, the, the original spin down state, 0, 1. Right, uh, so factor of minus here, this minus h bar over 2, this is the measurement. So that's the basic scheme. That's the basic uh, mathematical formalism. That's what, what we are calculating means. And in fact, we've been doing this already. We've been doing this with um, wave mechanics too. Um, so we could have, what we were describing with the momentum operators, we could have done it with the matrices, except it would have been very unusual. You would use rows and columns to indicate some kind of, I don't know, polynomial or something. Then I won't get into that. You will see that in your <laughs> in your algebra class if you need to. Um, so now this only works for very special states, states that are eigenstates of the operator. If you don't have that, then, um, then it gets a little bit more complicated. So in the note, it described how to calculate the expectation value that we have been already doing somewhat in wave mechanics. And this is an example of expectation value calculation. What did the people get when you calculate that? You got zero? And that makes intuitive sense to you? That, OK. So when you look at this state, you might say, oh, so it has um, or you know, kind of divide it this way. This is the spin up portion of it. This is the spin down portion of it. So maybe intuitively you say it has equal portion of spin up and spin down. So when you take the average, it should average out to zero, right? Yeah, if you did a calculation and it made the intuitive sense to you that way, then great. Anyone have any question on this question? <laughs> 